This is the last of three weeks on derivatives of scalar fields. In the previous two weeks, I worked to expand the idea of the derivative, starting with partial derivatives and then working with partials to make other derivative-like concepts, eventually leading to linear approximation as the idea that, hopefully, ties it all together. In this video, now that the idea of the derivative has been fully extended to scalar fields, I want to focus on the first and most important application of the derivative, optimization. In single variable calculus, the derivative was the key tool to find minima and maxima functions. And the same is true for scalar fields. First, however, let me make the definitions. What are the extrema of scalar fields? The idea of a maximum or a minimum unsurprisingly extends nicely. So let me consider some scalar field f. Informally, a maximum is a point that the function value is larger than all other nearby points. I want to make this a formal definition, but how do I do that? Well, a point p is a maximum if f of p is larger than other nearby function values. So if p is a nearby point in the domain, then f of p must be greater than or equal to f of q. I use the lenient inequality here for reasons that will be made clear in the algorithm for calculation shortly. If I wanted a strict version of this, one that didn't allow equality between f of p and f of q, I could do that and talk about a strict local maximum. But the standard definition allows for equality here. In any case, q is a nearby point in the domain. How do I measure this? What is nearby? Well, p and q are vectors in Rn, so the distance between them is the length of their difference p minus q. If points are nearby, then this distance should be small. I'll call that small number epsilon. So nearby means within some distance epsilon for some small positive number epsilon. If there is such an epsilon, some little region where the inequality holds for all q, then p is a local maximum. And the definition of a local minimum is much the same with the reverse inequality. A point is a local minimum if there exists a small epsilon measuring how close I want to be to the point p, such that f of p is smaller than f of q for all other nearby points q, determined by the distance from p to q being less than epsilon. In single variable calculus, there were minima, maxima, and there were unclassifiable critical points like the point zero, 00 on the graph of the cubic. In higher dimensions, there is a greater variety of extrema. Having more than one direction in the domain, more than one dimension, means that extrema with different behaviors in different directions are possible, and that leads to the next idea. Now let me consider a scalar field in only two variables. When I talked about contour plots, I introduced the idea of a saddle point. Here is that same contour plot. This was a saddle point because there are lower regions on the left and the right, and higher regions above and below. In the middle of this diagram, there was a special point, a point that is the highest point between the low areas and the lowest point between the high areas. The shape this produces is a little like a saddle, hence the name, but I like to think of this as a mountain pass. There are valleys to the left and the right and peaks above and below. The pass is the lowest elevation way to go from one valley to another. Now let me formalize this. The idea of a saddle point is that it is a maximum in one direction between the valleys and a minimum in another direction between the peaks. How can I say that mathematically? I say that a point is a saddle point if there exists, exists an epsilon greater than zero as before, and this will indicate how far away the nearby points are, and two unit directions u and v thought of as local direction vectors. Then, if I move in the u direction just a little bit, and that's measured by adding a small amount of that local direction, amount delta, either positive or negative, and that delta is bounded by epsilon to tell me how close I am. So that moving a little bit in the u or negative u direction, if in that direction the function is smaller than the nearby point, then f of p is a minimum in the u direction. The u direction points up 
towards the peak on either side. Similarly, if I move just a little in the v direction, either positive or negative, then the function is a little larger than the nearby points. In the v direction, the function has a maximum. The v direction points down towards the valleys on either side. That's the formalization, and this is an entirely new kind of extremum. It is neither a minimum nor a maximum, but a mixture. A maximum looks like the top of a peak, and a minimum looks like the bottom of a valley. But a saddle point looks like a pass between va two valleys and between two peaks. This kind of behavior continues. The more dimensions a scalar field has, the more mixtures of minima and maxima are possible. So those are definitions, both formal and informal. How are these actually calculated? Well, in single variable calculus, extrema were found by setting the derivative equal to zero. A minimum or a maximum occurred when there was, at least instantaneously, no change. Everything leveled off for a brief moment. The tangent line was flat. Nothing was moving. The same is true for extrema of scalar fields. The derivative must still be zero. But which derivative? Well, it turns out all derivatives. An extreme value is found when all the partials are zero, when all the directional derivatives are zero, when the tangent plane or hyperplane is flat. The conventional way to indicate this is to say that the gradient is zero. As a vector, since the gradient is a vector, the zero here is the zero vector, not the zero number. The gradient is the direction of greatest change, so a zero gradient means that momentarily there is no direction of greatest change because there is no change. Momentarily, everything is flat. So let me do a couple examples to talk about zero gradients. Here is the scalar field of two variables. To get the gradient, I need to calculate both the partial derivatives. Here, those partials are 1 and negative 2y. The second vanishes for all points x, y where the y coordinate is 0, but the first is constant 1, so it never vanishes. Therefore, the gradient here is never 0. This scalar field has no extrema. It doesn't matter that there are points where the y derivative is 0. Both the partials need to be 0 to indicate a maximum, a minimum, or a saddle point. And here is the graph of this example. There is a ridge here going down in the negative y direction, but there is no max, no min, no top of a peak, or no bottom of a valley. The fact that the y derivative is zero can be reflected in going over the ridge. For a fixed x, there is sort of an up and down path over the ridge with a maximum to that path, but it is not a maximum of the whole function, since on the ridge there are nearby points that are larger. Both derivatives need to vanish to indicate an extreme point. Here is another example, another scalar field of two variables. I calculate both partials. They both vanish when sine of x plus y is 0, and sine vanishes at all multiples of pi, so x plus y must be a multiple of pi. In that expression, I can actually solve for y to get these lines, and here I have infinitely many points. Any point on any of these lines, lines with slope negative 1 and y intercepts a multiple of pi. All of these points have zero gradient, so they will all be extreme points. What does this look like? Well, here's a graph of this scalar field. The lines I found by the previous calculation are the di diagonal lines at the tops of the ridges and at the bottoms of the valleys. There are infinitely many of these lines as this function repeats sinusoidally over and over again. I mentioned at the start of the video that the definition allows for equality. The reason to take the non-strict inequality for the definition is that I do want to find these ridges and valleys when I look for extrema. On the top of this central ridge, if I walk along the ridge, the elevation is constant. It is not strictly a maximum, but it is good enough. This ridge feels like a ridge of maxima and something that should be found by the algorithm as it is. Likewise, along the bottom of the valley next to the ridge, I want to find this whole line of minimum points, even if they are not strictly minima because each point on the line is at the same minimum value.